Hey guys, I'm Aburu and welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're looking at the Tier 6 Japanese cruiser, the Oba. Now in the Japanese tech tree there is no Tier 5, so it's a skip from Tier 4 Kuma to uh, the Tier 6 Oba. Now the Oba is a very good ship overall. Um, similar in many aspects to the Cleveland, the American equivalent, at Tier 6. It's slightly worse DPM, slightly worse guns, but it does have torpedoes. So, similar with all the Japanese cruisers in the game, they all have torpedoes. From tier 6 onwards, the um, Americans don't have torpedoes, but the Japanese do. So that's a big advantage in sort of close combat uh, situations. So let's start with the um, main stats of the ship. So survivability of the ship, 40 out of 100. So 40 out of 100 is a pretty good score overall. Um, it's not terrible for a cruiser. 30,000 base health. Um, but it is, however, worse than the Cleveland. The Cleveland has um, 35,000 health. This is only 30,500. And this ship has maximum armor of up to 76 millimeters. The Cleveland as well also has uh, better armor at around 130 millimeters maximum. But this ship is at a disadvantage in terms of armor. So 8 to 76 millimeters in the Citadel, 6 millimeters the forward and after ends, which is practically nothing. The gun casemate 6 to 48 millimeters and armored deck 35 to 48 millimeters. So it's not a specially armored ship, but in my opinion, this ship would be used similar to the Pensacola Tier 7 American cruiser. Um, keep far distance from the enemy, use the max gun range uh, to your advantage, um, and try to avoid sort of close combat situations. The next stat of the ship is artillery. So, as you can see from the ship, there is two guns at the front, two double barreled guns, and one at the back. Now, these guns are 203mm uh, caliber. So pretty good caliber, better caliber than the Cleveland, in fact. The Cleveland only has 152mm, while this has 203. So these guns uh, do more damage per, sh uh, per barrel than the Cleveland. Um, not bad, actually. So the main damage is 5,170 for the AP and 2,170 for HE. This is the maximum damage. So pretty good damage overall. The rate of fire is 5.5 rounds per minute per barrel, which is good. However, the turn degree time is quite bad at 36 seconds, so it's kind of sluggish. Um, it's sort of um, mid-range battleship standard of turning time, so not especially good. But the main thing about these guns is the max distance. Now, 14.9 kilometers is fantastic. These guns don't fire as often as the Cleveland's. They don't fire... Uh, there's not as many guns as the Cleveland. Uh, the Cleveland has um, 4 by 3 so that's a, a huge advantage over this ship with, uh, with general sort of damage per minute. But this ship has the range advantage. This ship's guns go to a maximum range of 14.9 kilometers, whereas the, um, the Cleveland goes only to a max distance of 14.5 kilometers. So that 400 meter advantage you have in this ship really is great. So the, the 400 meter advantage you get in this ship over the Cleveland is a big advantage. What I like to do in this ship is when I'm duking out with um, Cleveland's is push them to my max distance of 14.9 kilometers so I have that 400 meter advantage uh, where I can fire my guns on them and they can't fire their guns on me. So pretty good guns overall um, but the rate of fire is a bit worse than the Cleveland's. So the secondary armament is four times 120 millimeter guns. Um, these guns on the side here, there's two on the left and two on the right so nothing special but secondary armament is primarily used in close combat situations where this ship will very rarely anticipate. So these guns are secondary armament and also used as uh, anti-air um, guns which uh, is on quite a lot of ships. There's quite a lot of ships that use secondary armament uh, against ships and planes. So the next stat which is very special for the cruisers, Japanese cruisers in particular, is the torpedoes. So uh, this ship it has two back mounted uh, torpedo tubes, so four on each side, so that's eight in total, four on each side. 610 millimeter torpedoes they do a lot of damage up to 16,267 um, they don't go especially fast only it's kind of a sluggish 59 knots which isn't you know it's not bad for this tier but it's quite bad in comparison to the late game um, torpedo speeds and the max distance of these torpedoes is 10 kilometers so the 10 kilometers really makes a difference here uh, Japanese t torpedoes are substantially better than the Americans and 10 kilometers is great. You would expect 10 kilometers to be a destroyer's max distance um, for their torpedoes, but you know you also have it on a cruiser, so that's fantastic. Um, a slight disadvantage is though that these torpedoes are back mounted. When I'm sort of occasionally, you get in situations where you're close proximity to the enemy. You don't m mean to, but you know you're so far focused on the target ahead of you, 
that um, a ship comes in close proximity. And of course, you can't fire ahead of you. You have to turn shock to the left or right to actually do some torpedoes if the ship is coming um, towards you. Okay, the next stat is the anti-air capability of the ship. So, typical of all cruisers in the game from tier 6 onwards, they have a vast increase in anti-air capability. This is no exception. 28 out of 100 is fantastic. Uh, not only this, but um, cruisers from tier 6 onwards have the anti-air increase ability, which increases anti-air capability for a short time. So any planes that go ahead of you and they're within sort of four kilometers, then they're going to be um, they're going to be blown up almost instantly. Um, very very nice ability, but has quite a long cooldown. So this uh, ship can be used as a defender of the fleet against um, torpedo bombers, against dive bombers. It's a good ship in terms of shooting down planes of the same tier, but this ship couldn't shoot down planes of let's say tier eight, tier uh, ten planes they, they tend to be very hard to shoot down so if this somehow gets in matchmaking like that then uh, which occasionally does happen in the close beta um, you'll you'll struggle immensely to shoot down some planes so the second last stat here is the maneuverability so 66 out of 100 we have a maximum speed of 34 knots pretty good for a cruiser sort of average i would say you know 40 is sort of destroyer speeds and 30 I don't know, 25 to 30 is around battleship speeds so 34 knots is pretty good i think it's about the same as the cleveland actually um so good top speed circle radius is 870 meters which is pretty terrible uh, it's, it's about the same as the battleships um of this tier and probably yeah tier eight going down um, to tier 5 they have around this sort of circle radius which is pretty crappy it's sort of similar to the Kitakami this thing won't turn in a hurry but it does however have a quick rudder shift time of 8.5 seconds so the 8.5 second rudder shift time really sort of makes up for the poor circle radius this ship can sort of dodge um, shells quite quickly so turning around in a circle is an issue in this ship so I like to use the 34 knots max speed just to sort of kite my enemies, keep them at my max distance of my guns, 15 kilometers away, so I can fire at them from long distance without having to worry about uh, taking lots of damage. This ship can very easily be penetrated, can very easily take a lot of damage, so it's best to just keep away from all the bigger ships. Of course the primary objective of this ship is mainly to take out other cruisers and destroyers. Um, occasionally you will sort of duke out with a battleship, um, and I would suggest you do it at your max distance and sort of use that rudder shift time to your advantage, sort of weave in and out of um, enemy shells when they're firing at you from 15 kilometers away. And the last stat is concealment. So 58 out of 100, you can see the ship. It's, it's not overly big, but it's not overly small. 12.1 uh, kilometers surface detectability range and air detectability range of seven kilometers. So you can fire over your um, surface detectability range um, of 12.1. But if any of the sort of the mid-range cruisers, uh, sort of tier five, get within range of their guns, you will be spotted. Uh, they are quite a bit faster than this ship, so that can be an issue. But your primary objective really is to kite enemies around the map, um, not engage them frontally. Of course, if they are within close range, you use your torpedoes to help you out in that situation. So yeah, pretty good overall. Um, the Ob is a good ship. Let's have a look at the modules of the ship. So as you can see, there's not a huge amount of uh, modules for the ship. There's only two, uh, two minor upgrades, which um, doesn't really affect the ship too much. It's just an increase in range and an increase in health. Let me strip the ship of the upgrades, and I'll show you guys what it's like bare-boned. Yeah, so this is the bare-boned, um, basic, unupgraded Oba. Or Aoba, however you want to pronounce it. So initially, we have when you have this as a base ship, no upgrades. It has 26,000 health at tier 6, which is terrible now you really really need the hull upgrade um which is this one here uh it's only like a, a few thousand experience and it's totally worth it you get 4200 increased health which is necessary in my opinion um a, a very nice increase but you know 30,000 still isn't a lot so this one is probably the first upgrade i would choose so this has a survivability increase of 4200 health a anti-air increase it just upgrades some of the base guns the upgrade also increases maneuverability by decreasing the rudder shift time by 2.6 seconds. So that's the first one I would choose. Now the second upgrade, it, which is, uh, well, there's only two, uh, the second one which I would choose is the increased range. So this this upgrade, um, the gunfire control system, is with most ships in the game you get a 10% increase in range to for this ship to a maximum range of 14.9, initially starting at 13.6. 
13.6 isn't too bad, but I would definitely go with the health increase over the uh, range increase. But you know, these don't cost a huge amount of experience. It won't take you long to get both of these, especially if you have a premium ship helping. So 10% 10 10 increase in firing range to a maximum range of 14.9 kilometers. There are no gun upgrades. Uh, you get no increased rounds per minute, no you know decreased turn time. You get no uh, torpedo upgrades. And the torpedoes only go 0 0.5 rounds per minute, which isn't especially good at this tier. So the credit board upgrades of the ship. Now, I did have this fully fitted with all my upgrades, um, but I have just bought the Megami Tier 7. So I have removed all the upgrades from the ship and put them onto the Megami. So uh, as you can see here, I would the first one I would definitely choose is the main battery modification 1, which is the um, reduced chance in critical damage of main guns and reduced battery repair time. So only have three guns. Um, if one gets knocked out, it severely, severely impacts your ability to actually do damage in this ship. In this ship, your priority really is to fire at long distance. If you don't have these guns, you can't fire effectively at long distance. You need all three guns up um, for as long as possible. So this ship has very little armor, so if you get penetrated with high explosive on your guns, they can very easily be knocked out. So this just reduces critical damage on guns. Um, this is a necessary upgrade in my opinion. So we have a few upgrades for the second one we could choose. I would always choose this one for the second one, which is the Gunfire Control System Modification 1. Only costs 250,000 credits um, and increases main battery fire accuracy by uh, a percentage which is unknown. But still, you do notice a very, very nice increase in accuracy for your guns. Now, you only have three of them. You want to have as much of them hitting as possible. Another very necessary upgrade, in my opinion. So the third credit board upgrade I would choose is probably the Damage Control System Mod 1. Typical of all cruisers, uh, most people fire high explosive at you because you have lesser armor than battleships and you'll be on fire all the time. This isn't for the flooding aspect of the uh, perk. I would choose it for the minus 5% chance of fire. When you're set on fire and you've already used your repair, then you'll be set on fire again and again. You know, this 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 really, really uh, helpful upgrade. This one here, the damage control system mod one, which is the one I would choose. The fourth upgrade I would choose is probably this one here, the steering gear modification two, which decreases rudder shift time by 20%. You have a pretty effective rudder shift time for a cruiser at 8.5 seconds. But if you boost this further, then um, you know it'd be easier to sort of dodge shells at long distance. The other two won't really help you. We have a you know minus 20% time to reach full power, which is not necessary in this. 34 knots, you get there quite fast. And this one here, which is a 15% flooding recovery time and 15% uh, time to extinguish fire. So, you know, this, these don't really come in handy too much. Uh, I would definitely choose the steering gear modification too, which is probably the um, the best one of the three. So the Obe is a competent ship. I would push this to its max dip limits of 15 kilometers at almost all times. Um, occasionally you do get within uh, range of battleships and they do severe damage to you. So I, I, that is the only situation where you would use your torpedoes. You can, you can quite effectively sort of push within 10 kilometers of an enemy, let's say cruiser, um, use your torpedoes and then push back out to uh, 15 kilometers. But of course, if an enemy gets within close range of you, you can use your torpedoes as a defensive measure. Um, in this ship, because it is so lightly armored, I would definitely prioritize using it as an emergency weapon as opposed to a attacking weapon. It's very different to the Megami. The Megami is so well armored at tier seven that, um, well, up to 140 millimeters, which is sort of battleship standards of armor, you can use your torpedoes aggressively. Now, the Oba is quite different to the Megami in terms of armor, in terms of health, uh, speed, um, but the Oba is a good ship overall. So let's get into some games. Okay, this is the tier six Japanese cruiser, the Oba, and we're on uh, domination mode on New Dawn, which is one of the new maps um, recently released in the closed beta. So, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, uh, the Oba has um, four abilities instead of three. Um, usually a cruiser, well, the um, the American cruiser at this tier, the Cleveland, has three abilities at this tier um, instead of four, mainly because the um, uh, Cleveland doesn't have torpedoes. So this ship has torpedoes, it has the repair ability, which every ship has. It has the T button, which is the plane, scout plane. And it has the Y button, which is the increased um, anti-air capability for a short time um, uh, ability. So four abilities is better than three. And this map, I'm going to head towards C, um, see what the enemy does. The 203mm guns do a lot of damage towards the lower tiers. 
it's quite effective against the Cleveland when you're pushing it towards your max distance of your guns at 15 kilometers. But the, the Cleveland at tier 6 has a very, very good DPM, much better than this ship, in my opinion. So we head towards sea, usually sort of a couple of destroyers head this way and some cruisers. But I can see on the map that already one battleship is heading this way, which is a bit of an issue. So, so I've just seen the battleship, the Nagato is edging closer, so I'm going to turn left quickly as opposed to um, later. The circle radius turning time on this ship is terrible, so I, uh, it's best to turn earlier than later. And I can see that there's a 2 to 7s over there and a Miyogi tier 4. So I'm going to probably engage from this distance as opposed to the distance the Megami is in right now. So I've loaded AP, the Pentacle is coming within range, and the Nagato as well. 14.9km uh, and the Omaha. The, the Omaha is my primary uh, target at this range. Uh, the Nagato... Yes, the 203mm do quite a lot of damage, uh, but it's not that effective against sort of Nagato's armour. So I see the Omaha is now within range. So I, I'm levelling off now, not turning any further, and we're going to focus down the Omaha. Now, the Omaha has very little armour. And when these things penetrate, they do a severe amount of damage. The MR also has a... Uh, just beneath the, um, the engines, it seems that uh, that's where the magazine is held. So you do some severe citadel hits and some severe damage um, when you manage to hit it. So now the, uh, the enemy has just popped smoke. So they are invisible for a short time. So I'm going to focus down the Nagato. So you never know. With the with 203 uh, shells, you could get some effective hits and you could miss. So yeah, I'm just going to juke out. See what uh, my luck is today. It seems like the Nagato is almost stationary, so I'm going to fire. Um, well, not very far at all. I'm going to slow down a bit because I'm, I don't want to edge too uh, too far away from this battle. The Omaha is now within range again, so Omaha is up again. Uh, we did do a critical hit on the uh, battleship, and we have just been hit by a dive bomber, so we're now going to focus on the Omaha. So we're going to go to stop. We're not going to go to full reverse. In fact, we could actually edge forward a little bit. If we're caught stationary, uh, we could be in a bit of trouble. The Omaha is now almost stopped. But that's a big mistake in the Omaha, in my opinion. He's stopping to avoid the torpedoes. And we are having some torpedoes head towards us. So we, we can very easily avoid them by just edging towards the middle of them. And we are focusing down the Omaha. We have just missed the torpedoes, which is good. The Omaha is, again, almost stationary. I think his engine must have been knocked out. That is probably the most... Uh, that's probably the, the reason why he is stopped. Oh, no, he is now going full speed. Okay, so now we're going to fire where he's going as opposed to where he is. Because he's not, oh, bloody hell. Going to fire broadside. Hopefully we can finish him off. There is two Omahas there within sort of close distance of one another. So, oh, okay, we are now in a bit of trouble. But it's a bit of spot of bother. We are probably going to get hit by one or two of these torpedoes, but they don't do too much of damage. We get hit by one. That's not too bad, but we are flooding. Now, flooding will last 25 seconds. The thing is, when you are flooded, you do move a lot slower, uh, and you do take on water, and your health does gradually go down. Now, we did Citadel hit the Omaha. The Omaha has a very, very big sort of firing, uh, a very, very big Citadel uh, firing mark, so very easy to take down if you get within close range. And now we're going to put the repair. We have repair back up, so we have just repaired the flooding. And now we're going to focus on the Nagato. So the Nagato is within good range now. We have just done 2,000 damage. I'm going to focus him down a bit. He's not got his guns on us just yet. Uh, the Omaha has been sort of outside our range. The Pentacle is a bit closer. The Pentacle is behind the rock. So the Nagato is probably the best option here. Uh, now with battleships, it's good just to not... It's good to stay your distance away from battleships. They are severely dangerous. Learning circle radius of the ship is pretty terrible. So we can't effectively get around this rock quick enough. So we're going to have to take it slowly. The Yomaha is now within range. Yomaha is pushing this way at some good speed, so we're going to uh, lead the shots to where he's going. We have managed to avoid the rocks, and hopefully we get some effective hits on the Yomaha. Ah, we hit him on the top for no more than sort of 300 damage. So we're going to continue to turn this angle here. We are winning the match uh, in terms of kills and in terms of score. So the Nagato is 13.5 kilometers away. We're going to focus our guns on him before we get the guns around and focus on the on the Omaha. Now the Omaha is within range again. Uh, he's moving quite fast, so I should probably leave these shots quite far. That's a bit too... Yeah, that's a bit too long. Now, it is a bit of an issue with the huge turning time of these guns and the massive turning circle radius of the ship to get the guns around completely when you manage to change the angle. So, Omaha is now facing straight up towards us. At this distance, he probably will run aground, so we're going to fire where he's going to run aground. At sort of this distance. Uh, oh, one to hit, 11,000 damage. We probably won't get the kill, but um, 
it seems he is gonna. Oh, maybe we will. Okay, yeah, we, wanna, we managed to get the, uh, the the kill on the Omaha. Uh, finished him off for 2,000 damage. So, the enemy Miyogi is now 10 kilometers away, and we're going to fire our guns on him. Hopefully, we get some effective shots. He has some torpedoes coming towards him now. I uh, would pref preferably like to take down the Cleveland, but now we're not yet within sort of the greatest distance to deal with that. So, we are turning this way. Ah, uh, oh, damn. The turning circle radius on the ship is very sluggish. Um, it definitely shows. We just did four th uh, nearly 4,000 damage there on the Miyogi, which is good. But now he's hiding behind a rock, so we have to turn his guns around and focus down the Cleveland. Now we haven't really gone within uh, 10 kilometers of any ships effectively in this game, so we can't really use our torpedoes. In my opinion, the torpedoes are more of an emergency thing as opposed to a uh, an offensive thing. But as we're turning this corner here, there is an Omaha there, there's an Miyogi there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of ships clustered around B, so we can use our torpedoes if. But they are back mounted, so we have to sort of turn very sharply this way. Now the Mizuki is coming around, and the Mizuki is a big threat here with his torpedoes, and he has popped smoke. So we have to turn very sharply left. Uh, it's a very sluggish turning circle radius, but we're going to focus him down as soon as he pops around the corner. Uh, now, he should be here any time. There he is, and he's very close. So we're going to continue. We have to finish him off before he gets his, gun his torpedoes on us, but the guns are so slow, uh, but we have to do a couple of spread shots. He's obviously fired his torpedoes at us now, so we are in a serious... Uh, oh, I don't know why I did that. We are in a serious problem now if we actually get hit. And they are coming towards us, and you led them quite well. Now we have to turn straight in. We have to straighten up very quickly, otherwise we will get hit. Um, we can probably survive one, uh, but we don't really want to get hit at all. So we're going to straighten up, um, even up now, reduce speed so we don't get hit by any at all. Now we're getting over planes overhead, so we're going to pop the Y button, dive bomb incoming. So Y button to um, increase anti air capability for a short time, hopefully take down the plane. Um, but it wasn't very effective at all. We only shot down one plane, two planes. Um, which is better than nothing. We only got hit lightly there, and we didn't, uh, it, and it didn't induce fire. So not too bad. Now the Cleveland uh, is within range. He hasn't got his guns on us, but we have our guns on them. 203 millimeters is a lot better than his guns. Only 152 millimeters, so we can do some serious damage. There we are. 8,300. One Citadel hit. Very effective, and he's turning towards us. Uh, now one more. Hopefully we can finish him off. His armor is pretty good, but his armor is better than ours, but, you know, it's still not very effective against the 203 rounds we're firing at him. So, one more salvo and he should be dead. 4,000 damage. So, hopefully, next time we can finish him off. We have two, two second reload. Miyogi is within uh, secondary armament of this guy. Uh, we have to finish him off before he manages to get his rounds down. So, hopefully we can finish him off. 200 damage away. Ah, such a shame. And it seems our secondary armament won't be able to finish him off in time. Um, but maybe our main guns can Ah, 200 damage. Yes, and our second armament managed to finish him off. So not, not too bad. We have two kills at the moment. We didn't manage to get the destroyer, but no matter. And the match is very quickly coming to a close. So other than the battleship, there's only one other ship, and that is the aircraft carrier. But aircraft carriers tend to play very long distance. He's most likely the other side of the map. So the match is very close to the end here. We have knocked out a ship, but they knocked out one of ours. Uh, that knocked back the cap slightly. Ah, oh, great, okay. Okay, now that we've noticed that the carrier is there, so we're going to focus down this guy here. We spotted him, uh, we know where he is, but his planes now might focus us down. So we're going to fire our AP, what we have left, and then we're going to reload to HE, because HE is most effective against carriers. Um, we've got no hits there, but no matter, we're going to get within spotting range of this guy. There we are, 11.8 kilometers, and we're going to fire like hell. So we have, we're not within range of our torpedoes, which is a bit of a shame. Hopefully we can finish him off before the end of the battle. If we set him on fire, that means his planes are utterly useless. They can't reload. They can't uh, reload their armament or anything. And we continue to fight this guy. 10 kilometers away, so we are within prime um, distance at firing our guns. There we go. <coughs> there we go. 2,000 damage and 1,000 damage. We're going to continue to fire. Hopefully set this guy on fire. I'm going to straighten up. It seems like he's moving very slightly. He knows that we're firing on him. Um, and he's trying to move. So, 9 kilometers away, we have a huge advantage here, but hope, hopefully we can get some good damage on him before the game ends. Um, I don't know if we'll get a kill, we are within range of torpedoes, but torpedoes won't get there in time, we have all three caps at the moment. We did manage to capture the base, um, but yeah, we are doing some serious damage on this guy right now. Um, but he's still not on fire, which is a bit of a shame. Okay, another 3000 hit, which is pretty effective. If we switch to armor piercing, we might be, to get, might be able to get one last hit and do some good damage. But we might not be we might be unlucky here, which we seem to be, and the game has ended. So.
So the game ended pretty well. We actually got uh, 260,000 credits, nearly 3,000 base experience, and 142 free experience. 75 hits, 7 uh, planes shot down, 3 critically damaged, uh, 2 destroyed, 3 citadel hits, and we captured a base. So pretty good. Um, in terms of experience, we came on top. 2 kills and 7 planes shot down. Uh, tier 6, uh, it was a tier 7 match, and we're in a tier 6. This isn't usually the best matchmaking for this ship, but it's not bad overall. And we managed to get uh, top of the team, so pretty good. In fact, top of the match. So yeah, we, in total we got around 65,000 damage. We didn't manage to get any torpedo hits because we uh, we went within range. We got four. We launched four, but we didn't get any kills. Uh, but 65,000 damage just with uh, AP and AT rounds is pretty good. So yeah, this has been the Tier 6 Japanese Cruiser, the Oba. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.